And let's keep going. So we talk about the dopamine. Uh, dopamine associated with Parkinson's disease and also a lot of uh, addictions, uh, they also use dopamine. It, because it's the reverse circuitry. So in the brain, the reverse circuitry. Let's look at the next slides. And it's pretty well identified uh, what's the brain area associated with reward. Two area, nucleus accumbent, this is one. And the second one is the ventral tegmental area, VTA, ventral tegmental area, VTA, these two area. And these two area, we found people uh, with addiction, like the drug addiction or behavior addiction, like gambling, video games. You found people, they just uh, sit there and play those slot machines for, for hours, sometimes days. They can sit there for 24 hours and they play video games for, for three days. And you measure their brain, you found this area that's super, super activated. So nucleus accumbent. And that's where the dopamine works. So it's associated, associated with your reverse circuitry, the nucleus accumbent and ventral tegmental area, VTA. And these two areas, they will talk to the prefrontal cortex. This is the brain area. We'll talk more about this area in the next uh, chapter. Next lecture. This is area is the high level reasoning. Make you think, okay, is it worth it or plan for the future? And apparently these two areas are more original brain area. When they got super activated, they will inhibit the prefrontal cortex, make you do the reasonable judgment. And it turn out they have those uh, addictive behavior. So uh, this is the the reward brain area, addictive brain area. And it's been found in people with the drug addiction, alcohol addiction, or a behavior addiction like gambling. And when people receive the natural reward, food, water, sex, drug, and they will activate this brain area, pleasure center. And you can actually directly stimulate this area and trigger this reward like uh, give them drug or in animal in animal they can they can put a needle in and they can uh, train them to self inject those drugs to this brain area and it will actually make them behave like crazy so we compare the animal we every time we have to use the experimental group and control group so experimental group will put a needle into the uh, nucleus accumbent and the control group will put it into the body. And the animal will train to press the, the, the lever and get the self-injection. And what happens is, well, they quickly learned, okay, if I press, I'm going gonna to feel very good because the, the drug go to the nucleus accumbent. And you, you will find this group of animals, they will they'll just sit there and keep pressing the bar like crazy. And eventually they, they don't eat, they do nothing, and they die. So that's the how they find the nucleus accumbens associated with uh, rewarding. So the uh, drug abuse in the molecular level in your brain is mainly associated with two neurotransmitters. So the first one we talk about is dopamine. Dopamine is your reverse circuitry. And the second one is the one associated with your mood. We also talk about this, serotonin. Uh, like the cocaine and uh, methamphetamine, they, they work on these two systems. They either increase the dopamine release or uh, decrease the serotonin take back. And this video, I'll leave it to you. It tell, it tell you about the cocaine's effect in the synapse in the brain. And when you do drugs, there are always some side effect. So that's the normal brain. Every time I give you some reward, uh, have good food, you feel very happy, or I give you ice cream, you feel very happy, or you get A, you feel very happy, right? And the reason is your brain release dopamine. So this will make you feel good. And you get an A in this test, you will do it again to get an A next time, make you feel good. Or you like the, the ice cream, the next time you will try it to give you dopamine. And when you do cocaine, what happens is it will crazy unhealthily increase the dopamine level in your brain. So you feel so high. 
But there's always a problem because, well, it's supposed to be like this, and everything in your brain needs to be balanced. And when you release dopamine like crazy, okay, this system becomes insensitive to this. So your daily life, say you like, you used to like eat ice cream. Well, now it does not give you that much dopamine, and compare with cocaine. So you don't like ice cream, you want to do cocaine, or you used to be a good student, you like to have A, and now the the A give you nothing. This dopamine compared with the cocaine, so nothing in your real life give you that much high feeling compared with cocaine. So you nothing in your life make you happy anymore. You just want to go to do drug, and also it will make the the brain become insensitive to this. They will gradually remove the receptor. So they have five receptor, and you do cocaine, you make you feel so high, and the brain the brain is scared. They think okay, too much. They will take some receptor back. So next time when you do the same dosage, well, you don't feel that much high. So what do you do? You you increase the dosage, and you gradually increase the dosage until the drug kill you. So that's that's the the bad part of drug addiction. And also these drugs,、uh, cocaine, methamphetamine, they will they will damage the nervous system. Uh, we we can do the brain image compare with a healthy brain. It look pretty healthy. That's the that's the、uh, meta abusers brain. You you found it's like a it's like a sponge. It's all shrink and damaged, and it can cause permanent damage. So don't do drugs. You always when you start to mess up this delicate system, you you always expect some side effect. Okay, let's look at another one. Another one called GABA, GABA neurotransmitter. The GABA is called the gamma amylobutyric acid. It's a super long name. So people in neuroscience and psychology call it GABA. The GABA is is unique because it's inhibitory. So all the other we talk about the excitatory. This is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It will make the postsynaptic neuron less likely to generate action potential. At molecular level, how it make it less likely? It will make the enzyme more inactive. So it will open the chloride channel. And chloride is still high outside, low inside. So sodium chloride go hand in hand. Uh, sodium is high outside. Chloride is also high outside, low inside the cell. And when the GABA is released, they open the chloride channel. Chloride gonna flow in because high gonna flow from high to low. And once it flow in, enzyme become more negative. And when it become more negative, it's less likely to generate action potential. So it will it's an inhibitory neurotransmitter. It's like the brake、uh, when you drive. So most of time you need accelerator, but sometimes you really appreciate the brake, and that's that's the GABA's function. And in the brain, we call it depressant. Sometimes we call it tranquilizer. So this group of、uh, medicine to trigger、uh, GABA release, we call it tranquilizer. And it can be used in anesthesia, and also a pretty famous tranquilizer is alcohol. Alcohol. You found some people they say, "Okay, I'm I'm too. I'm freaking out. I need a drink." When you're freaking out, is every neuron in your brain fire like crazy? Too much extra potential. And why get a drink? Make you feel good. And you feel calm. And that's because it will trigger the GABA release. And once the GABA release, once the GABA is released,、uh, it will. It will inhibit postsynaptic neuron, make make it less likely to fire, and you your neuron fire less. That's how you feel calm. So that's the tranquilizer's function. the The molecular level is the GABA. So alcohol, alcohol is relaxant or tranquilizer. And、uh, how much alcohol you can take. It depends. Depends on the individual, and、uh, that depends on the brain. Depends on the liver. The human liver has more than two hundred functions. This is the biggest organ you have in the abdominal pelvic cavity, in your right upper quadrant. And these organs has more than two hundred function, and one function is detoxified. So you will remove the toxic molecule from your body, and your body consider alcohol is a toxic molecule. 
it will use enzymes to uh, detoxify, and the enzyme is called alcohol dehydrogenase. This enzyme. So how much alcohol your body can tolerate depends on how much enzymes you have. And it turned out uh, some some people have a lot of this enzyme, so they can tolerate a lot of alcohol. And my body, I've I'm short of this, so for me, what half glass of beer is good enough for me. So it depends on this. And when you drink too much alcohol, it can cause the memory impairment or other uh, other damage, because the alcohol is a toxic molecule. It can it can uh, damage your brain, and also it can damage your body. Like uh, this, I just give you a FYI. You found all these guys. They either uh, have serious damage or die. They died because of drinking alcohol. Uh, it can cause the suicidal behavior or uh, cause some accident. Uh, like this person, he he drank too much and he went to his uh his dorm and he passed away and it took about one week. His friends say, "Where where is this guy? Let's go to find him." And he died in his in his room for for one week. So it can cause the alcohol poisoning. So don't don't take too much alcohol. And alcohol also have some uh other bad functions. Especially for a uh, pregnant woman, it can cause the fetal alcohol syndrome, and it can cause serious mental retardation and uh, damage the baby. So let's look at the fetus development. And this is the the fetus. So the human's baby, human's embryo, take about nine months to develop. And they have some critical time for that organ to develop. So let's look at this. So from zero to nine, this is these are the months. So every time you look at the table, it tell you you look at what's in the X, what's in the Y. So that's the months. And this tell you what system develop, like a reproductive system from uh, months one to five. That's why in the second trimester, okay, you can you can tell this is a boy or a girl if you want to. And the ear take about the first uh, two months, the eyes, the first two months, the heart, the first two months. So about three, uh, three weeks, uh, the, the fetus have the, the heart rate because that's, that's the heart start. Let's look at the central nervous system. It takes a super long time because we humans have a very, very complicated central nervous system. A hundred billion of neurons. So from week two all the way to nine months. That's when the central nervous system is developing. And when you pour alcohol into this system, you inhibit the development of the central nervous system because uh, it will, alcohol will induce GABA release. It slows down the process, right? make it less excitatory. So it can cause the permanent damage of the uh, fetus development. And it can cause the fetal alcohol syndrome because alcohol can directly go through placenta. Placenta is the uh the 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 organ to provide the oxygen to the baby. And the alcohol directly goes through the placenta and it will go to the, the fetus. So it can affect the fetus and the fetal alcohol syndrome. So they have those uh unique facial expression like the the uh small nose and the, the wide gap between their two eyes and the thin upper lips and lower ear. These are the facial expression. But that's how they affect the outside. And imagine how they affect the inside, the brain, the central nervous system. So they can cause the, the facial abnormality. This is one of them. But the serious one is it can cause the permanent damage of the central nervous system of the baby. That's permanent. So uh, avoid alcohol during pregnancy. There's no safe dosage, really. Um, so avoid alcohol. Okay, let's take a short break.